Hi and welcome, my name's Anna Dushinsky from the Optimum Health Clinic and I'm Director of Psychology and I'm here with Tanya Page, who's Director of Nutrition. Hello. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about muscle pain, again a specific symptom within chronic fatigue ME and how really the psychology and the nutrition or the physiology of it interlink. We talk a lot on the psychology side about the fact that if your body's in stress, then that's going to lead to more muscle pain. But I thought it would be really interesting today to actually look at the pathway of how that actually happens. So how does the fight-flight response, how does being in that stress state literally equate to ending up with muscle pain? So I guess there are a couple of things that we could talk about. The first is that if you're in extreme stress, very often it makes a big impact on how you're breathing. And I know that that's something that can have a direct impact, a kind of short-term impact. So can you tell me a bit more about that? What, what do we mean there? Well, the main, the main symptom that, that we see that, that connects with this is, is yeah. hyperventilation. So yeah. where you're over-breathing. So you yeah. tend to breathe in more than you breathe out. Which is, of course, when you're breathing quite fast yeah. and quite shallow breathing, yeah, Absolutely. which is linked to stress. Yeah. Yeah. So the problem with that is that um, the carbon dioxide that you're supposed to be breathing out doesn't actually get out. Okay. Um, so it tends to build up in the blood. Um, right. And so you get um, a, an acidic solution okay. um, building up in the blood, um, which, is, uh, which essentially um, inflames the tissues because it's acidic okay. stuff going around in your tissues, okay. which is inflammatory and which hurts. Okay. So it can be as simple as that. Right, so kind of almost in a quite short term... Yeah point of view, you could create quite, you know, quite significant muscle pain by literally just not breathing right because you're in that stress state. Indeed. Okay, absolutely. And what we do there, obviously, from our point of view, is help you to, to work on calming the system down absolutely. emotionally, psychologically, to get everything working better. Is there anything from a, a physiological point of view that you'd work on, or is it primarily... The, really the not so much response? on yeah. hyperventilation. We yeah. can give advice as to how you, you can change your breathing and, yeah. and the sort of symptoms that, that are related to hyperventilation, okay. which, which enables people to identify when they're doing it better. Yeah. Okay. Um, but essentially, it's a matter of changing your breathing. Yeah, um, and that's very linked to control. changing your psychology and changing the stress state that you're in. Okay, great. Mm. I suppose also, when we talk a lot about the fight-flight response and maladaptive stress response, um, in an earlier video, we talked about how the fight-flight response impacts on, on the gut. Yeah. So... How can being in fight flight or that kind of maladaptive long term chronic stress state actually physiologically create the symptom of muscle pain? What actually happens in the body? I know there are probably multiple things that are happening. Yeah, essentially, one of the main reasons for, for muscle pain um, is mitochondrial dysfunction. Okay. The main reason being that um, the mitochondria, which are the little things that produce energy yeah. in your cells, yeah. there's a lot more of them in muscle cells than there are in, okay. in other parts. The brain is, is well, um, well supplied as well, but the muscles okay. are the other big area. Okay. So when the mitochondria start to fail, you yeah. tend to feel it more in, in muscles than anything else. Okay. So it's... And I know that we've talked in, in previous videos a little more about mitochondria, maybe a little yeah. more specifically, but in terms of how the fight-flight stress response, again, if we're talking about anxiety, emotional mm. stress, how do we get from that to mitochondrial dysfunction or, or, or malfunction? Yeah, as you say, there are a lot of, there are a lot of ways of getting to mitochondrial yeah. dysfunction, and we have talked a lot about that in other, in other situations. Yeah. But um, one of the, the basic things is yeah. that we know from... from um, previous videos that yeah. the fight or flight um, response causes um, digestive yeah. um, issues, yeah. um, one of them being malabsorption. So okay. if you're not actually absorbing the nutrients that you require yeah. to, um, to make the, the nutrients that create your energy, yeah. then that's going to have an impact on, on the function of the mitochondria. Okay. Um, equally, even um, to, to simplify it even further, without going into sort of mitochondrial side, mm. um, when when you're in a stressed state, yeah. you use up a lot more magnesium than okay. you do at other times. Okay. So magnesium is a real um, stress nutrient. Magnesium, as some people will know in treatment, is one of the major parts of the energy cycle. Mm. And without magnesium, the mitochondrial um, energy will not okay. be produced. Okay. So, so the main reason is, is, is lack of nutrients coming into the system right. to get the, the mitochondria functioning. Right. Um, but you know, there's a number of different reasons why the mitochondria start to break down. Oxidative okay. stress is, is one of the major ones. Which we know is very linked to stress, or has direct links Indeed. to stress. Yeah. So oxidative stress would cause the mitochondrial um, essentially to be damaged, okay. um, for want of a better word. Yeah. So the more that happens, the, the mitochondria just, just go down and down. The less energy you've got, 
mm-hmm. uh, the more the muscle function will go down because okay. the muscles demand a lot of energy to, to work. Okay. So they don't work as well. So they start to produce tension and ache. They, don't, they just don't contract and relax in the way that okay. they should. Okay. And we know that's a slightly longer process, isn't it, that, yeah. that, that happening? Because in essence, you've got to have some of those pathways you know, not mm. working. You're not absorbing the nutrients to, to provide the energy. Yeah. You're not you know, absorbing the, the magnesium or you're using too much of it. Yeah. You're creating too much toxicity in the system or there's too much oxidative stress, which is damaging the mitochondria yeah. directly. And over a period of time, presumably, what you're getting is more and more muscle pain, muscle fatigue and, uh, and muscle yeah. aches. Okay, yeah. really interesting. So that's the direct link from fight, flight state, stress state to you know, or some of the direct links to how yeah. that will actually um, yeah. manifest in, in things like muscle pain. So in terms of treating it, again, we've said before, but presumably the most direct or most effective approach is going to be a bit of both. So working to calm the system down mm. as well as to provide the right nutrients. What's going to happen if you don't do both, kind of from a physiological point of view, if you aren't dealing with the stress response and, and the kind of anxiety levels, for example? Yeah, again, it, it, it's another case of you'd be firefighting and not, okay. and not getting to the crux of the problem. Yeah. Um, and you'd almost be feeding the nutrients in as fast as they're being utilised to okay. keep the stress um, process <laughs> okay. going. Okay. Um, Just feeding the stress cycle, basically. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right. and obviously, you know, I would talk to a client about, yeah. you know, if, if I think that is what's going on, yeah. then there's obviously some of the nutrients we use for mitochondrial function or, yeah. or even the basic stuff to, to get the stress, you know, the, the system de-stressed yeah. from a physiological point of view. Yeah. Because one of the things we often use is magnesium. Yeah. Most people feel, especially with muscle pain, feel an awful lot better with yeah, magnesium because yeah, yeah. it just helps to relax the muscles. Yeah. Um, and it's a very clear muscle relaxant. Yeah. Um, so, so that's important. But if, if you know, I'm, I'm seeing a client and, and there's no change, given yeah. that I'm putting an awful lot of, yeah. of nutrients in, it's actually a waste of money yeah. uh, to be doing that and yeah. not, not treating the, the, the cause of the problem, which is the stress in the first place. So, absolutely. you know, obviously we would it's, advise accordingly absolutely. If, if we see that that's, if we see that's that happening. happening. And yeah. on our side, I know that you know, we, can, we can make big changes by getting the system calmer, yeah. and often that will make a big impact in terms of pain. Things like EFT and all, all of the work that we do to, to reduce stress can have a, a big impact on kind of ongoing going pain but equally for for some cases and it's a question of really knowing how to look out for for the signs as a practitioner i think indeed there there can be a lot of significant help by by working on the on the physiology of it as well okay absolutely so thank you very much for for listening hopefully that's uh, been useful for you or given you some explanations to what's happening if you want to speak to any of us um well, either your practitioner more about that either from physiological or psychological side then please do or equally if you'd like to contact us to talk more about any of these issues then please do call us contact us and have a free 15 minute chat so thank you very much Tanya okay thank you